In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to paint 28mm scale faces. I will be using the new Fortunate Sons set of German soldiers from AK Interactive. This here is an example of one I've already finished on its base, as you can see. So you can see the result we're aiming for in the end. The only thing left to do with this one is to paint the head. First of all, you need to know which colours to use for the highlights. Look, seeing them on my palette will help you understand a lot better. I've got here some base flesh and some beige red. I'm going to make an equal parts mixture with these two colours to use as my base. Then I'll start adding some beige red little by little until I get to the colour as it comes in the pot. I will include some sunny skin tone a few times to help create a warmer skin tone. So these are all the colours I'll be using to create some lighting effects on my face. Let's start by painting the base colour over all the skin surface, making sure to cover everything well. Because the eyes have already been painted, I need to be very careful not to ruin them. Little by little, I'm covering all the skin area And I recommend leaving it to dry in between layers so as not to move the paint and drag it from one area to another. My painting method is very simple. As I gradually add lighter colours to my mix, the area I paint becomes smaller and smaller. In other words, I'm painting less and less of the skin with each new colour. This will ensure that the lighter colours are being used for the highlights. I've added some more beige red to the mix and I'll keep going. To begin with, I'm not worried about any particular aspect of the skin. I'm not painting any wrinkles or details. I'm just painting to cover the larger areas in general. I'm at the point now where I'm painting with beige red as it comes in the pot. And as you can see, I'm still only highlighting the larger areas in general. I shouldn't forget to paint areas like the ears and neck so they have the same tone as the rest of the skin. As you can see, the face is starting to take on light and volume. Now I want to add some warmth to the skin. For that, on this occasion, I'm using sunny skin tone in my mixture. And I carry on just highlighting the larger areas in general. So this is the last time I'm going to add sunny skin tone to my mix. My paint and my brush strokes are moving from the shadow or the mid-tones towards the light and I'll just keep going. The face is already looking more alive, brighter and also taking on a warmer skin tone. So now I've added some basic skin to the mix and I'm going to start on the details on this face. This colour has a lot of white in it, so you need to be careful when you start to paint with it. Areas I'm going to highlight. I'm going to emphasise the tip of the nose and the bridge of the nose separately. Then I move on to the ears, the tops of them, and a bit on the lobes. Then 
Then a couple of points on the nostrils here to make them stand out. Then the lower lip and the area around the chin. And the corners of the mouth on both sides. The upper lip as well to make it stand out from the rest of the face and separate it. Then the forehead illuminating the upper part more than the rest. And of course, the cheeks. And what would be the cheekbones? I'm going to continue working on the parts I've already mentioned. Right, well, that's the highlighting on the face finished. As you can see, the nose, mouth, cheekbones, forehead, etc, etc, are all nicely detailed with plenty of contrast. But the model is still looking a bit like a lifeless doll, so I need to continue working on the shadows. Again, the process is very simple. I'm not going to use dense paint, but rather dilute it quite a lot. So much so, in fact, that it just stains the model. It's not really a proper glaze, but rather just a touch of highly diluted paint. And I'm going to focus on the parts hit the least by any light to create some contrast with those highlights. My brush strokes are moving from the mid-tones towards the shadow, and as I said before, I recommend leaving it to dry in between layers before carrying on. I'm going to do the same with each one of these colours separately, not mixing them at all. Finally, some for, for some extra profiling, I am going to mix the reddish black with some black for a very dark colour to use on the final darkest shadows and some profiling. Let me show you what I mean. So this is the model after applying the highlights and painting the hair as well to make the difference from when I started to apply the shadows even more obvious. The process is like I said before. Using shadow flesh first of all, I'm going to add shadows with brush strokes moving from the mid-tones towards the shadow, dragging the pigment and accumulating it in the areas of darkest shadow or where the light hits the model the least. The areas where I want to create shadow, well, they would be around the neck and the lower part of the chin under the lower lip as well the area right next to the hair is also somewhere i normally add some shadow at least with the first tones the lower part of the nose perhaps even redrawing around the nostrils and the eye socket You can also add some shadow along the eyelid line, but without making it too dark. I'm going to continue applying this color and I'll show you the result when it's done. As you can see, the face now has a lot more definition to it, but it's still not quite enough. So I'm going to continue with dark shadow, insisting on the shadow areas, but covering less and less than before. I'm going to go back over the lower part of the head, especially where the neck joins the clothes, which is quite a dark area. I'm going to go back over 
the eye sockets here to try and darken them a little more the lower lip obviously covering less than before for some extra depth and underneath the nose I'm going to leave it to dry in between layers and go over it some more personally I like to do at least three layers three separate attempts I've moved on to reddish black now but reducing the area I paint a lot more Here you can see how my model is looking at this point. There is a great deal more shadowing on the skin, but it still lacks depth. For that, I'm going to add black to my reddish black and do some more profiling for some extra depth and definition. This is quite a critical step now because you need to take great care not to ruin all the work you've done up until this point. Okay, the lights and shadows need to be quite exaggerated in order to make out the details on this model from a distance. That's why you need to darken all the areas where the different parts come together quite a lot. So this is the final result. After applying the last bit of shadowing to the model, as you can see, all the different parts are well defined, have depth, and the volumes are much more visible. However, the model still looks like a doll because it is missing something very important. Different tones, which is what I'm going to do now. I will be using glazes to create all the different tones. What is a glaze, you might be asking yourself? A glaze is a color filter that is achieved by diluting the paint a lot. This here is a glaze. It needs to add very little paint to the model. Glazes are applied and then left to dry. I'm using these four colors for all the tones. The magenta would be for the nose area and the area around the eyelids. I'll use blood red for the areas where there would be more blood flowing, such as the ears, the temples and the cheeks. And for the stubble, I need to make a mix of base flesh here and turquoise, which gives me this greyish color that simulates stubble very well. So these are the three glazes that are going to give life to my model. I start using the glazes in the same way I start on the rest of the clothing. From the inside out. In other words, from what would be underneath to what would be on the top. The beard, for example, is one of the outermost layers, so it will be the last glaze I apply. I'm going to start with the magenta glaze on the nose applying it to the whole of the nose and as you can see the first layers are hardly noticeable at all this is an effect that will become more and more noticeable as I, as I start to apply more next the reddish tones I'm going to do the lips with this then some of the temple the ear and the lower cheeks. I'll do the same on the other side. Well, I'm going to keep adding more and leaving it to dry in between layers until I get the exact finish I want.
Finally, what I'm going to do is apply some shadow for the beard. I've switched to a slightly larger brush for this because I want to add as few layers as possible. I always recommend dragging the pigment towards the shadows. These glazes also help to blend in any transition that you didn't quite do well the first time. And that's the process. I'm going to keep going and then I'll show you the result. Well guys, here is my finished German soldier and the process for painting a face is complete. You can see here that quite a realistic effect is indeed possible in very little time. If you liked this video, make sure to stay tuned for more.